Okay, so I, I found in the NEC code, National Electric Code, uh, exposed wires. Well, it actually was referred to as um, open air on a number four wire, and that's what that uh, medical job and you know safety reasons. When would you expose a number four without putting in some protection? Let's take a look at knob and tube. That's exposed wires, isn't it? And yet it's shielded. It's in an encasement. It's in a. It's in a. You know, this is the only thing I can think of. They don't. They don't. They actually talk about it. But this is what I can think of: is it's treating it like knob and tube, an exposed cavity, exposed wiring. Now this job has been holding me up for some time. It's my personal job, and uh, it's because I don't want the knob and tube there, and I don't want to chase it all the way back to original. But the problem is it's got multiple, um, also I'm lazy as hell with all my other jobs. So it's got multiple um, issues with this knob and tube. But now it's low voltage, I mean low voltage, it's low demand, it's just the ceiling lights. But they did crazy things like, let me zoom in, crazy things like this right there where that was hidden in the ceiling. So I've got to address that with, a, with an accessible box. But talking about exposed um, systems, exposed wiring, leaving it exposed. I, someone commented on my knob and tube video stating that, uh, you know, a lot of experts are just hemming and hauling about knob and tubing, but they're not directing to the code. I direct it to the code and show that knob and tubing is legal. Um, but now we have this exposed air issue now, I, I found in Pennsylvania's weatherization program, they just did an experiment, uh, t went back and the, doc the, uh, the uh, information went over it. And they were looking for fires on whether they helped contribute it with this insulating of attics, covering over uh, a knob and tube. And they call it K&T, knob and tube, K&T. So they found that it's, in it's very insignificant. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not... Most of the problem was, as you saw in that, that it was not in boxes and they, you know, wasn't strapped like that. But what they directed their my attention to in their in their videos were in their uh, content was more bad wiring like that, you know, unacceptable wiring, and, and they also talk about the heat that it builds up. That knob and tube needs the air compartment to help. Um, uh, cool the wiring and it's aluminum. Aluminum cools pretty fast. So how do you insulate this ceiling? That's my part of my problem with this place, this room here is how do I insulate this ceiling for sound deadness and also stop the heat build up that I would create by wrapping the wiring not allowing it to have any open air. And pretend like this is in the uh, attic floor now. So pretend like we're looking at the attic floor and you want to insulate that area. I'm going to show you how to do that, and let me see if I can climb up on this counter without killing my, breaking my counter or killing myself. Uh, I don't think I'll kill myself, but you know that's not the way it works, is it? So, yeah, I'm there. All right, I've got my camera equipment here. I'm selling a lot of it, getting rid of a lot of it. So let's see, let's see if I can look down here. Good. So grab yourself some insulation board. I'm going to show the back side of it. Insulation board. And this is your bay. So the bay next to it, you can insulate, right? So the bay out there, you can insulate. Well, not that one. But the bay's next to it where it doesn't have any wires running into it. You can insulate. But this bay, to leave it the open air design, simply go up, bridge it with some half inch or three eighths inch. Um, yeah, that didn't work. Work. I'll give you one out here then. Bridge the. Huh. Can I zoom out? Zoom out. That zoomed in. It zoomed out. Okay, bridge it with with some insulation. Bridge it with some insulation like that, and then run your insulation on top. So your bay down below would be full, and then it comes up and you'd go over top of this rigid insulation with the same amount of insulation. This would allow you to have the, the uh, compartment still open 
And now it's not code that you do this. Um, it's just that the results from I read from uh, Pennsylvania's weatherization program show that they really think it's it's uh, it's um, ventilation related that the wiring is overheated. And uh, well, obviously they're finding fires in the attic, and the only thing different was their weather, weatherization that they added insulation around those connect around those uh, the knob and tubes. And it's at the connectors. I don't appear that it's at the wiring, but you, the wiring no longer can cool down. Of course, the uh, connectors would be the part that would heat the most um, if they're, you know, not uh, use a, um, a product that can help keep it cool and also wire tied correctly. Wire tied to, you know, union together collectively. They also found a lot of uh, brittle um, wrap. With, the, with these connectors. So I would say if you're gonna stick with your knob and tube, which, which I am, I'm not gonna replace all this knob and tube, to do that bridging and resolve it that way. Now in here for sound deadening, I'm gonna to have to, let's see if I can move the camera over for you. I'm gonna to have to have these, these wires are approximately, you know, six inches off the ceiling. It's all staple. Uh, insulation onto the ceiling to help uh, well above those wirings I'll still get my my ventilation below the the uh, the uh, so I'll stay I'll stay two inches away from it I'll get some sound deadening and I'll get um, also the compartment will still have ventilation the compartment next to it I can fully insulate I can fully insulate this one, except for, you know, when I come down to there, of course, I'll stay clear of that knob and tube. This one will have, can do the same thing. Now, you can move the knob and tube down a little bit, you know, just so you don't, so you don't hit it. So you can disconnect this knob and tube and lower it. That's a question now, you know, as a homeowner or a contractor, you should not move the knob and tube because you're not allowed to unless you're working with a licensed electrician. So if you're a homeowner, though, it's yours. You know, you, you take the responsibility. And would you own it? I guess you should never own it, but you got to own it if you have to. But lower it. You can lower it down maybe mid-span, and you'll still get your sound deadening in there. Um, you could put rigid between it and caulk it. But that's not going to give you the same sound deadening as a product such as such as a Rockwell. Rockwell. Um, safe and sound product um, there we go so there we have our dilemma our issue I want to quiet the bathroom upstairs I have this existing lighting of course that I will not use but it's interesting they talk about the heat buildup and the issues but yet they, they meet inside these boxes and back then it's they did some crazy stuff I mean look at the wiring there and it's very thin wiring, which transitions over to copper, but it made it out. It made it out okay. You know, I they did temperature test, um, temperature tests on this stuff. Now, sometimes you can expose the wiring. You should you should just replace it, replace it. And they do sell interesting though. They sell a wrap for hydraulics and things like that. That is. I believe is non-conductive, electrical non-conductive, that I bet you could uh, wrap your wiring. Oh, wait a minute, you just created more of a heat issue wrapping it. Now it's not going to cool as much. So you see where I just went with that? So just stay clear of the, stay clear of the, uh, of the wiring as far as doing something creative like rewrapping it. Of course, you can, if you have a cut, you can probably, electrical tape would be really nice. They used to bug, wrap the bugs on power lines of electrical tape. Now they crimp them and they leave them exposed. Um, they, some people, sometimes they bug, they wrap them. This is the end of this video. I just wanted to add that, how the bridge in your attic and how to, um, well, it addresses the weatherization program in Pennsylvania, I think, where Pennsylvania has not addressed how to remedy that. I think it's simple as adding a rigid insulation over top of the, the base and then continue adding your foam insulation over there. And you can use a roofing nail to tack that down, small roofing nail, just to tack it into the ceiling joist. 
that, you never mind. That would you probably got plaster below. You wouldn't want to bang on it. So you could probably use a screw, a drywall screw, to tack it down, to secure it in place. And we're only talking, you know, four screws in the entire darn panel, maybe, and then cover it with your insulation. I don't know if uh, if if uh, you know, the entire attic is pretty damn hot. We know that, but apparently it's it helped reduce the the flow in the attic. The airflow in the attic um, apparently didn't cause fires all those years until they added the weatherization program. So that's where they say post hoc because of one, the other ones associated with it. And it's very small. It was like, I'll find the article, but I want to say something like 3%. Um, and it was always, seems like it, with the wires that they showed, they alluded that it was always bad connectors that were uh, covered. So, mm, you know, it's it's almost as if, uh, but they also relate that maybe those bad connectors would have been okay had they not covered all the wire and it would and the heat wouldn't have gone up in that, at the bad connector connection and started at that point those fires. And I think again it was three percent or three. Oh, maybe it was three. Yeah, something like they checked, you know, multiple houses and they have all these fires. Three of them, they they relive. It appears that, that they related it to, they're not very clear about it. Look, like this is with a fire. They didn't show one picture of the fire proving their statement. They just said the fires happened like X, and this is what the wiring looks like. But they didn't say that. They could have put those images there, but they did not. So how can they even prove those fires were, uh, that was the exact cause? Well, I, I'm not going to argue against their assumption. I'd rather work in the safety margin of the rigid board covering over it, leaving the uh, open air. Because if we know open air exists in the code with the number four wiring, it goes up to like 120 amps or something like that on a number four wiring. But if you in, uh, put it in a case, say a two inch steel conduit, you're down to 85 amps. I'm just kind of remembering off the top of my head. The reduction is pretty huge. So there is an open air um, 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 increase, if you will. So let's go with the open air increase. That knob and tube needs open air, and that's what also makes it so uh, part of its property. So great. Ending video.